This video evolved to provide further support to surveyors in identifying crossovers on streams in developed areas where it can be challenging. Physics govern the form of a river. Gradients provide energy that is expelled or dissipated through erosion and deposition. The river moves largely as an undulating sine wave that leaves its pattern in the form of a channel. As the river flows, it uses the energy to scour the bed, and then as the energy dissipates, deposits it. So you have high and low energy zones in the river. Most stream surveys are conducted in either step pool or riffle pool systems. With higher energies or in confined channels, the wave is tighter and undulates mostly vertical in what is called a step pool pattern. A crossover is the location on a stream where the flow of the river switches from being an area of erosion to an area of deposition. At this location, the stream applies equal erosive force on both sides of the bank flow channel, creating equal elevations on the banks and the main concentration of flow is in the middle of the channel at bank full flows. Since it is a deposition zone for bed load, the materials are coarser and relatively uniform in size and depth across the channel. How well the channel reflects these features is dependent on how stable the channel is and how much time has passed since the last bank full event. The specific characteristics of crossovers vary with the type of sine wave controlling the river. In step pool systems, the erosion is more vertical as the stream cuts into the bend, creating a pool and deposits material on the step located downstream of the pool. In armored or channelized streams, the river must revert to a step pool because it is confined. It will start to form steps and pools immediately. Look for deposits where the step is located and erosion on the bank where scouring is occurring. Riffle pool systems are often found in more moderate sloped unconfined valleys where they can create large meanders. In meandering streams, scour areas are horizontal, cutting into one bank and then the other. They will create a steep bank like a check mark on one side of the stream that is matched with a much flatter deposition area on the opposite. Larger materials that are rolled by the stream as bed load tend to be deposited on the crossovers. The crossover occurs at the location where the river switches from scouring on one side of the channel to the other. At this location, the properties of the bank will noticeably switch from being in an area of erosion to an area of deposition. It is identified by changes in angles, materials, and possibly vegetation. Determine whether stream section profile is flowing as a step pool or a riffle pool type. In developed landscapes, they are often precedent areas that cut through abandoned ponds where slope is at least locally increased and the channel is temporarily confined by the old pond deposits. Identify the transition area. In a riffle pool system, this will be the area on the banks where it switches from being a deposition zone to an erosion zone. In a step pool system, this will be the step. Narrow in on the crossover. The location will have a relatively uniform bed profile and the banks will be at the same height plus or minus 5 centimeters on both sides of the river. Surveyors should walk the river a bit to make sure you know where bank full flow occurs on the banks. Logs also tend to get trapped at crossovers creating what are referred to as cross logs.